Hello Internet, I'm your only mate and it's time for another episode of Death Battle! And this time we have Doctor Strange from Marvel Comics. I don't know why the fuck I said it that way, but oh well. Uh, versus Doctor Fate from DC. Now as I should say with all of my reaction videos, please click the link in the description below to go watch the actual episode itself. Like, subscribe, all of that stuff. Then come back to watch this video. Okay? Good. Support the official release. Oh yeah, now, as for how I know these characters... Well, uh, I know Doctor Strange just a bit more. I'll just get on to how I know Doctor Fate. Mostly just bits and pieces I've heard, like, on the internet. I have to admit, my first hearing of him was hearing that he was requested to fight Strange in a death battle. And I just know he's a magic man. I know there's like, been multiple Doctor Fates. Because different people put on the helmet, and they become like the new Doctor Fate. So that's uh, that's something there. Now I know he's meant to be really powerful as well. And uh, as for the character, I know a bit more about. I mostly know Doctor Strange, uh, mostly from his own movie. <laughs> really, that's the bad. I, I'm I don't really read like comics or anything, but I did really like this movie. We watched it like the other week as well. Cloak of Invitation is still one of my favorite parts, by the way. And uh, the uh, how he beats Dormammu is just amazing. <laughs> okay, and of course I know that's just a movie and it's like a movie adaptation, it's not the exact same as the comics. So I don't think that's really a good thing to pull any like feats or like anything from for a death battle. I do know that the Time Stone and the Eye of Agamotto are different things in the comics. So, uh, there is that. I don't believe Strange is going to get a Infinity Stone in the in this death battle. I almost said in a movie, what the fuck, but anyway. So, I mostly just know Strange from that film, his appearance in Thor Ragnarok, god that film was hilarious, and Avengers Infinity War, oh god that film was so good. Anyway. As for who I think is going to win, I'm actually not too sure. Uh, I only know like, a little bit about them, really. Like, just some things that my friend Yang Nian Sen has told me. But ha she's also told me that that's, like, I think about 4% of what they can do is what she said. So I've kind of been putting off looking into them. So that, that way you get my reaction to finding out all the bizarre and, like craziest shit that they've done. So, yeah, whether that works out for a good reaction or not, I don't know. So, let's see. If I had to pick who I'd prefer to win, I think I would go with Strange just because I'm more familiar with him. But, that's about it. I don't really have that much of an attachment to him anyway. So, I'm just going to watch a cool fight and it's being done by every person on the 2D Death Battle team. So this is bound to be one hell of an animation. And of course, looking forward to finding out what is next, which should be Torian's, if uh, I've heard right. I, I think somewhere it has been said that the next fight is Torian's. So anyway, as I usually say, I'm going to put my headphones on and shut up and hit play. How long before Special Star steals that line as well? Oh, for God's sake, gotta refresh the damn thing. Lord, you bastard. What the... For fuck's sake. Okay, a bit of a delay because for some reason I got logged out of the receive site. Don't know how that happened. It was weird. And the video's just like, no, stop. Stop that now. Might leave that in because why the hell not? <laughs> anyway, for real this time. And play. The art of magic is a perplexing thing. Only those with the right knowledge, talent, and willpower can truly claim to be the most powerful wizards of all. Like Doctor Strange, the Sorcerer Supreme of Marvel Comics. 
and Dr. Fate, DC's defender of cosmic order. He's wins and I'm boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. By the way, I have not played Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite or Injustice 2. Dr. Stephen Strange which is what they wasn't showed. just any brilliant neurosurgeon. He was the very best. Too bad he was also a That's an understatement <laughs> based on what I saw in the film. The on. Sensational patients bring recognition. Recognition brings money. And money keeps Wellhaven stores open. Can't blame him, though. When your entire a family a dickish the thing of going about it, but Stevens okay. Did. It's kind of hard to get attached to anybody else. Also... Money's just great. Strange's talent at the operating table earned him celebrations worldwide. Alright, the picture froze for a second and it sped up. There we go. Oh, this scene. All I gotta say is, you fucking idiot! High speeds on a road like that at night in the rain while texting and driving. Surgery. Pretty inconvenient. Hmm. To find a cure, Strange spent his entire fortune and traveled the globe until he found the Ancient One. He had heard of this man's befuddling mystic healing powers, and at this point, he was up for trying anything. But the old dude refused to cure him. Instead, he offered to teach Strange how to use magic himself and become a superhero. Who needs hands when you have magic? Through his training, Fair enough. Strange discovered many secrets. Oh, that him, scene was trippy. Along with plenty of handy spells. He has learned so many charms, jinxes, enchantments, conjurations, hexes, and incantations that it would Immortality. be impossible to list them all now. But he certainly like has some patience. Like the nearly Jesus Christ. Unless you're super strong like the Hulk or Thanos, no way you're snapping these chains. He can okay. surround foes in everlasting fire with the flames of Faltine. My God, that's a lot. Of you hear say Bossack? Knock out foes with the mist. <laughs> God damn it, Boomstick. And shield himself using the seven rings of Ragador. Who the hell came up the with fuck? these spell names? Whatever happened yeah. to the old Abracadabra? Everybody loves that one. <laughs> Other techniques of his include illusion, it's a classic. hypnotism, protective force fields, telekinesis, immortality, time manipulation, power stealing, teleportation, dimensional travel, transmutation, spell so much. And he can turn himself into a ghost. Boo, motherfucker. That's his astral form, a projection of Strange's soul separate from his body, which defies the laws of physics. Look, Wiz, he can go through walls and fly around. That's a ghost. To Basically, yeah. Strange audibly but if the ghost self dies, he dies, and if his body dies, so well then he's dead too. So. Anyway, after many years of study, Strange's mentor was slain by a creepy hentai monster, and Strange was granted the title of Sorcerer Supreme. Which is like a normal sorcerer with all the <laughs> As Sorcerer Supreme, Strange was deemed the most powerful magic user and defender of the world. To better perform his duties, he carries numerous magical artifacts which assist him in battle. Cloak of Levitation, I love it in that movie. Him fly without magic and has a mind of its own. Like oh, so they're going with that. Carpet, but way more stylish. <laughs> ha, that was a community death battle, I remember. And the acts of anger whatever cut through Jeez, so much in fact, strange found that axe in my ex-wife's old witch cave <laughs> but most versatile of all is the eye of agamotto with this amulet strange can perceive any truth absorb massive amounts of energy enhance his psychic powers and fire okay. a light that can weaken and obliterate magical entities if you haven't noticed dr strange is super powerful i think i'd like to just saying it's only an infinity stone in the film that's a big kind of thing. Oh, I love that moment at the end. I've come to bargain. And if he ever gets stuck, he basically just rewrites the rules of reality, which is probably what happens when you divide by zero. That's not even possible. <laughs> exactly. It's magic whiz. Anything can happen. Strange's astral form has traveled across sure. the in quote 
precious seconds, putting him at several what? million miles per hour. Jesus. Even better, when Adam Warlock once used an infinity gem to banish Strange to the far reaches of the universe, Strange just cast a spell that zoomed him all the way back. So yeah. Jesus Christ. Given what we see here, Doctor Strange was most likely sent to a void or a large empty area between galaxies. The void uh -huh. where our galaxy resides is about two billion light years in diameter. Jesus Christ. Relatively close to the center. Based on Strange's conversation here, we can assume a generously short time frame of five seconds. So, Strange holy hell! Four point two septillion miles per hour. That's six quadrillion times the speed of light. Damn. Jesus! Oh, time he ripped the soul out of his arch nemesis and sent him back in time. Wait, he still made Infinity Gauntlet out of Adam Warlock. Jesus! Like, I'm saying now a lot, aren't I? With his immense Fuck magical yeah. prowess, Strange has survived blasts from Voltor, a robot with the power to move stars, and even withstood a supernova. At minimum, oh my God. star outputs over 350 septillion gigatons of TNT. That's six octillion times greater than the Sar Bomba, the most powerful nuclear weapon ever made. Huh. Well, I mean, I already knew about the comparison from Goku vs. Superman, but still, Jesus Christ, Strange. Oh my god. Clever, and while his physique is not superhuman, it's worth noting that he is a talented athlete and martial artist. This is important as the use of magic can wear down the magician's body if it is unfit. His immortality has also proved incredibly useful. I'll say, mm -hmm. he's looking pretty good for a guy born in the 1930s. More than that, at one point Strange was recruited by the Vashanti to fight in a magical war, which lasted 5,000 years. Holy shit. I've oh, heard really Doctor Strange. Uh, Do Do sorry, that. I've heard Doctor Fate Whatever did something similar, but for way longer. Protect the universe and reshape it however he wants. I know which doctor I'm calling the next time I'm sick. Who are you? I'm Doctor Strange, Sorcerer Supreme. All right, Fate, what you got? Believe in fate. I only believe in one thing, Wiz. 18 year 100 proof whiskey. Well, after accompanying his father on an archaeological expedition in Mesopotamia, 12 year old Kent Nelson certainly did. Instead of digging up boring old artifacts like tools or pottery, Kent uncovered a 10 billion year old god. Too bad waking him up also gassed Kent's dad to death. Jesus. This slumbering god was Nabu. A Lord of Order born from the very beginning of the universe. While Nabu normally cares little about the universally inconsequential concerns of individual humans, this time was different. Nabu took the newly orphaned Kent under his wing and taught him the ways of magic. Oh, sweet! I'd take a god dad over an ordinary one any day. But really, I'd just take any dad. Though Nabu oh. wasn't too keen on the actual parenting part of the deal. So he just magic Kent into a full grown adult over the course of a week. Does that mean he got hit with all those years of awkward puberty all at once? My god, <laughs> talk about a mood swing. To master the mystic arts, Nabu granted Kent okay. three ancient relics. First and foremost, there it is. donned the golden helmet of fate. Well, Kent woke up the physical body, Nabu's soul is actually inside this helmet. So when Kent put it on, his spirit merged with Nabu's and they became Dr. Fate. I am an agent of order. Wait, he's 12. Technically, he can't be a doctor yet, right? Well, in time, he became a... The animation was cute, that, by the way. A PhD in archaeology. Good for him. Anyway, he's also got the Cloak of Destiny, which gave him flight, super strength, and superhuman durability. Blast, uh -huh. he received the Amulet of Anubis, a talisman which increases fate's powers, counters opposing magic, and can launch an intense beam of magical firepower. It also houses its own pocket dimension, where the souls of past Dr. Fates reside. Oh yeah, lots of people have worn that shiny helmet. I mean, they can both dimension hop, so... Them were doctors. Even Kent's okay, then. Enza got in on the magic action, but Kent is, like, the main one, so we're sticking with him. As Dr. Fair Fate, enough. Kent became the immortal champion but of the I can assume Lord they're going to bring up feats from the others. The lords of chaos. And he learned I figure they could do the same thing. Skills he can use with just a thought. 
Perfect for putting chaos gods in their place. Fate can use telekinesis, cast illusions, erect force fields, hypnotize foes, read minds, teleport vast distances, create an astral projection of himself, travel what coincidence. and even manipulate matter at a molecular level. I can't look coincidence. He's so powerful, he can basically they can do so much of the same ball. shit. Like that time he did a freaky Friday body swap with Blue Beetle like it was nothing. He can even conjure up Superman's Kryptonian powers for himself. Oh. That's right. This guy can just decide to be Superman for a day. With his might. I want to say he's going to win because of that, but wouldn't it come with Superman's weakness to magic? And physically held back the destruction of the universe. Oh. The helmet, just the helmet, once flew through space so fast it reached the velocity of God and then bounced off the edge of the universe. What the hell does that even mean? Fate has regenerated his body. I want to say that sounds a bit faster, actually. From the likes of Superman and Ultraman, and somehow survived in a dimension of reality where literally the nothing exists. Who the hell is writing this crap? I don't know. So when DC decided to reboot their entire comic line, Fate was one of the only characters to survive the crisis that literally collapsed the multiverse. But he huh. does have one big weakness. The helmet is Nabu, and Nabu is the source of Faith's powers. So if you remove the helmet, then he loses his magic. he's screwed. For the most part, Kent does possess some magical ability. Oh no, screwed. Like but... and super strength, but he's not even remotely close to the potential of Doctor Fate, and even further from the true Fate. When the hmm. souls of a man, a woman, and a god come together, in this case Kent, Inza, and Nabu, they create Doctor Fate's ultimate state of being. An entity with enough power to rip the universe apart and effortlessly overpower other lords of order and chaos. Sadly, like all uh, the scenarios, keeping this going for too long could destroy all three of them. So fate doesn't go final form unless I'm really torn. To. Still, the people of the cosmos can sleep easy knowing fate is on their side. You once brought hope. Now I bring justice. Justice is blind, not heartless. Pause. Okay, one second. I just gotta grab my phone and Google something. Come on, load. All right, just gotta look up that number. I don't know how many times a speed of light that is. Right, uh, 33 zeros. Okay. Um, I'm starting to think based on that, I want to go with Dr. Fate. <laughs> because the speed thing sounds better and they said he withstood the destruction of the universe um but and they can both just recreate rewrite reality if they want to so i, I think i really have the, like, the best reasoning for going into this, <laughs> but I think I want to say Dr. Fate is going to win. <laughs> as much as I would prefer Strange to win, so I, I don't know. I'm just going to resume, really. All right, the combatants are set. set. Let's end it's this debate once, once and for all. all. It's time for a death battle! battle! Good luck to both. I would like Strange to win, but I think Fate's going to. By the way, go watch the preview for this on Death Battlecast. It is funny. It has come to my attention that there are two sorcerer supremes in this existence. Let's work together and make this world more peaceful. Oh well, it was worth a try. Blast magic at each other! 
Not th and throwing punches and kicks and everything. I mean, for your sake, it'd be a good thing if you win, otherwise you're going to look like a bit of an idiot saying that. Surprise! The fuck?! <laughs> So much is happening. What the fuck? What? Okay. <laughs> Why the hell are we not? That's a Chuck V. Saying it's a. Okay. They're just hopping all over the place. What is this cloak of levitation? I understand your power now. <gasps> oh yeah, I have Agamotto can find out and Oh shit. So the god is This is your chance, Strange. Let's see how you fare with <laughs> Shouldn't have kept talking. Is he strong enough? And here comes the helmet. You should have killed him when you had the chance, Strange. <laughs> Alright, that's a good line. Um... And he's... Got into that super form thingy. Uh, it's not looking good for you, Strange. He can do that too. Not sure how this. Oh! Huh. This is the same place from uh, Joseph vs. Kenshiro. Oh, yeah, the girl said, oh, shit, strange, you really shouldn't have done that. Yeah, you tried. You tried, strange. Yeah. Well, at least I called it right. <laughs> uh, don't doctors take an oath to never take a life or whatever? Analyzing this matchup was bizarre. I can imagine. Say, it was strange. strange. <laughs> Save the puns, Wiz. That's my job. But yeah, both these doctor wizards were so stupidly powerful, trying to find their limit was like looking for a needle in a haystack. But nobody remembered to pump the needle there in the first place. With their maximum potential seemingly unmeasurable, it's easy to make an argument for either one to win. If given the mm -hmm. chance, Strange could have certainly, say, stolen Fate's powers, or maybe even just willed him out of existence. I huh. Plenty of Strange fans are letting us know how in the comments below. And that's wouldn't surprise me. Death Battle looks at the larger picture to find the most likely outcome of them all. And yeah, only the most likely the on one. So scale. like. Majority of the time. This is what I was talking about. Over ten billion years. There you go. Definitely had way more experience. Fate also had the advantage of casting the majority of his spells non-verbally, while many of Strange's required specific hand movements and incantations. Still, it was only a matter of time until the Eye of Agamotto informed Strange of Fate's one weakness. Depowering him wasn't as easy as you'd think. But he can get his powers back. Superhuman strength was something strange didn't have at all. Basically, anything strange could do, fate could do too. 
but even more. Remember how Strange cast a spell which moved him six quadrillion times the speed of light? Yep. Now remember okay, so even if the stone was in there, the outcome wouldn't change. It took about one year to make this trip. Given the estimated scope of the observable and unknown universe, a trip of this magnitude would require the helm to fly nearly 28 decillion times the speed of light. That's over yep, four that's what made me think he was going to win originally. Look at it this way. Strange was a man borrowing the powers of a god, while Faith's a god borrowing a man. Plus, that power boost with Inza's of soul from the amulet put Fate on a level above the gods in his universe. Something Strange can't really do himself. Both Doctor Strange and Doctor Fate possessed incomprehensibly impressive magic, but Fate held more experience, greater physical abilities, and a wider range of talents. Which left Steven stuck with a strange twist of fate. <laughs> the winner is Doctor Fate. Congrats, Doctor Fate. Okay. Thanks What's for next? For exclusive commentary on this episode. Click that box right over there. And if you want the battle music for yourself, there's a download link in the description. Yeah, what is it? Ryu Jin! Alright, I'll talk about that next time in, uh, in a moment. Uh... I don't really know what more I can say about that fight of them that I think my favorite part was them just going like all over the place. <laughs> like ending up in the mausolea canteen. <laughs> canteen, I mean. And just like I'm not sure what that place was with the Chuck V Sega constellation. I wanna say Asgard for some reason. <laughs> because it had like a rainbow bridge. Or it could have been Rainbow Road from Mario Kart. I don't know. Uh Point is, I liked it, and, uh, was wondering if we were going to go into, like, other Death Pals as well because of that. I, I think I would have to say, yeah, that might be my favorite 2D fight of the season so far. Like, god damn, that fight was good. And... Yeah, the character I would have preferred to see win last, but I called the result right. So... Good for me. In some way, really. Oh well. Anyway, next time, Ryu vs. Jin. I'm not gonna lie, I had a feeling this matchup was gonna happen at some point, and uh... Oh boy, with this being Torian's fight. I can see it uh, being absolutely amazing. It looks like they're fighting in a similar place that uh, Sun and Kim are going to fight in in that DBX, which I'm still waiting on. Of course, it's probably going to be a, an unveiled at RTX, most likely. But anyway, that's going to be soon, right? I forget. No, oh, wait, it's in August this year, I think. I don't, I don't remember very well. Point is, it's going to likely be shown at RTX. But Ryu vs. Jin, uh... That, that should be great, and oh my god, attacking character is finally in death battle. Because I've been seeing people like demand Tekken for so long. So, there we go. I, I mean, I played a bit of Tekken when I was younger. I don't remember a whole lot of it, though. Like, next to nothing. But I do know that Jin has this, like, devil Jin form. Which goes pretty well with uh, Ryu having evil Ryu. So. Yes. Will Ryu be able to avenge his loss? Spoiler. <laughs> against uh, Scorpion? Or. Will he lose a second time? Like. Another character that's been in Death Battle more than once. Probably shouldn't say who. Just in case. Anyway, uh, I don't really know what much else I can say about that, <laughs> so I think I'm just going to leave it there. 
Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, all of that stuff, and if you haven't seen any of my other videos, here's a new outro. Bye. Hey guys, Goku here. You are watching Your Only Mate, and Your Only Mate is only good for the fact that at least he won't eat as much of your food. Catch you later.